Welcome to Aloud. I'm your host, Dr. Keneal Joyce, and I'm joined today by my friend, Anjani Bhargava. Uh, you may have met Anjani in our previous episode where we talked about teams, teams in the broadest possible sense of how teamwork is actually built into our DNA, um, the role of trust in teams, ways that uh, the challenges we face and the teams we're in at work, those can really, um, you know, be very hard to go through. And Anjani offered some very practical ways of understanding those dynamics, how to lean into them for our own growth and to improve the health of the teams that we're on. At the end of that conversation, uh, Anjani began sharing with me some thoughts that you're going to get to hear today. We're going to share that clip in this episode. And those thoughts specifically were around uh, turning your family into a high performing team. A high performing team in a, a very kind of humanistic sense as well. This is a team that well, she'll tell you more about it, that, that trusts each other, that works well together, that can make decisions, move forward and really co-create the life and the impact that you want to have. So both of us are mothers of, you know, elementary age <laughs> children. Uh, it is we are still in lockdown. I think both of us, at least you're still your kids, kids are still home on Jenny. No, they go to school. They're now but, in school. Um, Woohoo. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a little a little back and forth for a while. Yeah. And my daughter just began um, attending two days of three hour long kindergarten mm. last week. So I'm, mm. I'm getting used to that. Um, and honestly, it freaks me out because it means I need to be much more organized getting her out the door. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're here today to, to deep dive into how to turn your family into a team. And family could encompass you in a, a coupledom relationship. It could encompass you with your, your family of origin, your parents, your brothers and mm. sisters, mm. Uh, aunts and uncles, extended family, whomever you consider family. You know, I know for a long time, really, like I had two families. I had my 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 f blood family, and then I have my friend family. Mm -hmm. And some of them are so close that we literally, when we shop for houses, we're like, where are they going to sleep? Because <laughs> that's how close. So I think I want you to listeners to just think of, you know, who feels like family to you, whatever the state that relationship is in. Mm -hmm. And Anjani is going to share some of the methods and things that she's done inside of her own family um, to create this really beautiful system that I know is going to have a lot of positive impact uh, for you and each other and also in the world. I'm so excited to learn from you. I also brought here, if you're watching this video on on YouTube or on aloudpodcast.com, I brought three of our four family um, notebooks Ooh. that we've kept over the years, starting with my Ooh. husband and I when we were dating, of like our visioning and our goals. And so uh, fun nice. to have these finally unpacked because I'm moving in. And I'll, maybe I'll dive into those and share some personal stuff too. So Anjani, thank you back to the yeah. show. Remind our listeners, please, who you are, what you're about, why you're here. Well, I'm here because I absolutely love you and mm -hmm. <laughs> love what you're doing in this world. <laughs> um, who I am, I am a mother of two young girls, six and eight. I work with CEOs and executive teams as a coach and as a culture changer. Um, and who I am, I'm a human. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good for you for knowing that. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, awesome. Okay. So let's begin with, I see in the in the corner of your screen, mm. uh, there's mostly like, a, you know, there's a plant behind you and there's, mm -hmm. it looks like a whiteboard, but I see some yes. writing. What does that say? Because I know there's a story there. Yeah. So I'm not a big, like put words up on your wall kind of person, but this exists. My husband put this up in our bedroom because he was so moved. Um, it says life isn't about waiting for the storm to pass. It's about learning to dance in the rain. And I love, love, mm. love this quote. Mm. And if you really knew me, you would know that I love getting mugs with quotes on them. <laughs> um, but this, this particular quote sits on my wall. And the story behind that is my husband and I met at a wine tasting festival. And we live in Chicago. So, you know, torrential summer, summer mm. thunderstorms. And the sky turned green. 
and uh we were like all what the way what does that the mean field. oh when tornado the sky turns- tornado <gasps> tornadoes tornado warning yes oh. yes and me little me who's from la when i first moved out here i was like always watching for green skies because it's so scary oh my god <laughs> uh so <laughs> the sky turned green and they were shuttling people back to the main center mm-hmm. and he said well, it's just rain. Do you want to walk? And he's like, we're Indian, you know, like monsoons and stuff. And so, (laughs) and so that got me to laugh and we were walking and he starts belting out Bollywood music, (gasps) like singing songs. And again, if you knew me, like I'm a pretty serious person, like my (laughs) life work is to, is to dive into play and silliness. Mm -hmm. And my husband is all play and silliness. So life work, meaning it's not how you naturally orient mm-hmm, it's your journey okay it's yes. my journey yes mm-hmm. it's like the thing I need to keep chiseling into mm-hmm. and there was this big giant noise um like a like a kaboom kind of noise and we both fell to the ground um and when we came back up uh if you're like envisioning in slow motion we come back up look at each other and we just both start laughing because we realized what had happened was a lightning bolt hit a tree that was less than three feet from us. And so we almost Ooh. died. <laughs> if we were any wow. closer, you know, it would have died. Um, and it was crazy. Like, and you know, Keneal, I believe in the universe uh, mm-hmm. very much so. And I, I believe in like all the signs are there. You just have to open your eyes and look and be willing <laughs> to receive. And so like lightning does strike mm-hmm. literally. Mm literally and, and this is the first night you met your husband it was the first time I wow met my husband. Yeah. amazing yeah yeah did he also yeah. see it as a sign yeah I was his friends called me lightning girl <gasps> the, the lightning girl that I was that he was gonna marry that's so hot uh, <laughs> lucky you <laughs> uh and the the weirdest thing was so he proposed at that tree, the tree still exists. He proposed at that tree and it was a bright sunny day. And when he proposed, there was one cloud that came and started raining <gasps> and, then it, and then it went away. And when my daughter was born, we took her there and the same thing happened. Oh, no. Yeah. It's really, really freaky. <laughs> And his boss at the time, who was his beautiful, beautiful man, who um, he's known my husband for his entire career. And it was weird because like we didn't get a wedding gift from him. And it was kind of strange, right? Like here's this guy who's made oodles and oodles of money building and selling companies. And not it's not about the gift, but like we wanted to make sure we sent a thank you note if there was one, right? Yeah. And there was nothing and it was just like weird. And then one day we got in the mail and we got this envelope and my husband starts crying and he's not a crier at all. Hmm. And he said, Jeff just sent us the most like amazing thing. He wrote a poem. It was Jeff, that this Jeff guy is like six five, big big burly dude. Mm -hmm. He wrote a poem. He sent it to the Chicago Botanic Garden, told them our story and bought us the tree. (laughs) And so now his, his poem hangs on the tree. Um, and it's our tree. Oh my God. You are liquid (laughs) magic. (laughs) Oh my gosh. That's the most incredible story. I know. Do you have, have you made like a necklace that looks like that tree or, I mean, no, that's no, no, but incredible. Yeah. Oof. We go and visit the tree every once in a while. That's so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. So there you go. So the, the, <laughs> the quote on the wall mm-hmm. to remind you of that special, you know, pivotal mm-hmm. sign from the universe and the quote on the wall to yes to say trust in the universe and mm. it's all about how you look at it because yes. you could either say i need the storm to pass mm-hmm. or you can either say i'm going to dance right now yes oh god i'm so about that mm. i've been in um a, a form my family actually this is very relevant my family has been in a, a form of rainstorm yeah 
for a while uh, in the form of um, water, so, some, you know, water damage that happened in our house when there was a, it's pretty gross, right? Before Christmas, our main water line broke. I needed to find that, couldn't figure out where's the water, where's the water, but we hear the water rushing through the walls and we don't know where mm. the water is. So mm. eventually that was found. But in the meantime, it was the, you know, it was the holidays mm. and COVID. And in LA, there is a you know, construction boom and everyone mm. is building new mm. houses and renovating and it's impossible to get a handyman. So couldn't find a plumber or anyone to come fix it. We had no, um, no water all through the Christmas holidays and so no showers, no dishwashing. No, we, you know, we're good campers. So mm -hmm. we, we knew how to cope with it. Mm -hmm. uh, and then right after that got fixed, the, the main sewer line like backed up oh into gosh. our house. And so then now yeah, then they tore apart the floors and like tore apart the walls and then they, you know, like drying everything out of the whole process. And, and that people, when I've told them about it, and I realize I'm, I'm a dramatic person and things might sound <laughs> kind of worse than they were. People are like, oh my gosh, it sounds so horrible. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, I am so grateful for that. Mm. Like, it was just hilarious. It's like, what's this mm. now? My kids started like being the same as me. Like they hear a little noise and like, what is that? What does that mean? Is mm. that, is there water? You know, like, what's happening? Mm. But it was, um, we like flowed with it so much. Yeah. And it was, it was just, it was like, universe is telling us like it's time for you guys to move on totally. it's time for you to move on from this house like we were starting to debate maybe we don't want to sell our house <clears throat> maybe we want to stay in this very house forever but um there's also been all these you know signs and especially just pressure of all of us being home together we're like you know it's time for a change mm -hmm. so I, you know i really once the sewer thing happened i'm like okay i won't doubt anymore we're yeah. going for it. Like yeah. we are just, we're yeah. going. For it. And so we yeah. just are, we're out of there. So now we're, we're here in this awesome rental and looking for our dream home. And a client said, I love how you're in flow with chaos. Oh, I love that. I love that. I love that. Too. Oh my gosh. I love that. Inflow. Just like rolling with it. And, and, yeah. you know, geez, COVID such a guru. I think it really yeah. helped me yeah. Yeah. with that. So really yeah. grateful. And I love, I love that dancing in the rain image. I can't mm. wait to sing musicals with your husband. <laughs> uh, so let's talk about now. So then kids yeah. come along. Yeah. Yeah. And you've developed some frameworks, I think. Teach us about how you've turned your family into a team. I don't think it was intentional, but I think it's just evolved and I think it can be intentional. So every, so I'll just, I don't know if there are any frameworks, but I can just talk about some of mm -hmm. the things that we do. So, as I said, in the last episode, we created, like, I just wrote down things that were important and, um, like really simple. And again, it just kind of came through me. There wasn't a big planning session. There wasn't like, oh, what are our family values? Yada, yada, yada. Cause my husband and I tried to do that and it was, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. And I like, it's, it's a lot when you just articulate it. But I think the first thing I would say is when something wants to come through you, mm -hmm. just let it come. Mm -hmm. And so I remember I wrote down on this little little yellow sheet of paper, like the small notepads. Mm -hmm. And it was just respect my family, respect my body, respect my mind, respect my house, respect my earth, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. Five very clear things. And we've just kept it. Like we have it downstairs on that same yellow sheet of paper. We refer to it all the time. Mm -hmm. When my daughter's doing negative self-talk, mm -hmm. I, will, I will ask her which one of those, mm -hmm. you know, is she not paying enough attention to and she'll say respect my mind mm -hmm. i'm like yep that's mm -hmm. right and you know and then when and when they will argue and say like well my friend can do so and so and i can do them we can't do that and it's like yep that family is different mm -hmm. and we are different mm -hmm. and that family has different values and different different edicts and purpose and boundaries and we have these mm -hmm. so this is what it means to be part of our family. And mm -hmm. as they get older, the conversations are less like, this is the way we do things. And they're more, how should we do things? Mm -hmm. So incorporating and treating your children like actual humans, mm -hmm. 
that have perspectives and points of views, you mm -hmm. know, depending on the age, um, I think is important too. So like those, those five things of those five forms of respect, they might morph over time. We might mm -hmm. add some because, you know, my daughters think that it's really important to have, but it would be a family conversation. Family conversation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So those sound to me like that's a, that's a really, um, I, I love the respect framing. So that's, mm -hmm. that's really hitting me. And those sound like a, a set of shared commitments. Yeah, totally. So, Ooh, I, so like, I actually like that better than even values. Yes. Mm -hmm. Shared commitments. This is what we're committed to here and mm -hmm. commitment, meaning we are going to do everything in our power, everything in our control mm -hmm. to live these commitments. Mm -hmm. So it's not a rule list, mm -mm. which might be more like a set of agreements, mm -hmm. right? In, in yeah. a kind of conscious leadership framework. So yeah. we did an uh, episode 59 of a few episodes ago was all around creating clear agreements. And mm. I think that's, um, that's something I find myself doing often. And it's as part of the you know, maybe the shadowy part of the culture of our little family here mm. is um, we're always kind of optimizing and finding new ways to make make things like just how we want them. Mm -hmm. And so my husband and I will often come up with, oh, if we just had this rule, mm -hmm. then all of these things would work better. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. we'll call out new rule. <laughs> and everyone <laughs> says new rule. Yeah. And then we'll name the rule. But um, what's not, what's missing there. Mm. Because uh, as an Enneagram type four, there's always something missing. What's missing? <laughs> you know that set of clear commitments. So yeah. we have we have we have values. Yeah. Uh, you know our north star. But I love those commitments. So um, if if somebody like myself or a listener wanted mm. to approach that, mm. I know it came through you. But how? Mm. If if we have that intention, do you have mm. any recommendations for how to I'd say get just there? have a conversation with? all the members of your family, of your team and say, what's important to each of us and why is it important? And what do you want to, to live by? And you're right, like an agreement would be clean your room, right? Mm -hmm. Like clean mm -hmm. your room at this, you know, by, by this time this should be done. Mm -hmm. And a commitment is we respect our house. Mm -hmm. You live in this house, mm -hmm. right? And I love there's a there's a certain kind of spaciousness to it, but also an accountability. So yeah. you could ask a five year old, what does it look like to respect your house? Yeah, totally, totally. What are some totally. ways that we can respect our house? Totally. So to that end, we don't have rules. Wow. Right. We don't have rules. We have. I, I love that word. We have commitments. I'm always going back to these commitments and they're, and they're, they're holding me accountable too. Like, you know, I have a very elaborate morning routine and um, my, my younger daughter will be like, mommy, you didn't do your morning routine today. That's not respecting your mind <gasps> oh my and gosh. your body. And I'm like, yeah, you're, right. <laughs> you're right. So awesome. So right. awesome. Okay. Morning routine, hashtag morning routine. We need to hear it. <laughs> Tell us about your morning routine. Oh my God, there's a short version and a long version. So the mm -hmm. short version is breathing exercises, a bit of meditation and five minute journal. Mm -hmm. Love and that five minute journal. Oh, we had, we it. had, um, the, one of the creators of five minute journal on the show. I know. A little I bit know. ago. I am, yeah. I am a, such a fan of yeah. that. Um, yeah. So yeah, my we'll kids do it too. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Did you get they the have, kid version? They have the kid version. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then the long, the long morning routine, which, you know, I'm lucky if I have like a day a week where I can do it. Cause it's like two full hours is mm. the breathing exercises. Then a round of yoga. I do like 10 to 15 sun salutations. Mm -hmm. Then I dance mm. and then I have intentions that I kind of repeat and then the five minute journal. And then I take a cold shower. Mm-hmm. It's great. Yeah. I wish I had more. I wish I, I created more spaciousness to do that. It really uh, feels good when I do it. It's yeah. Amazing. I've I've had all different kinds of morning routines over the years. Mm. And um right now I'm I'm doing very little and mm. I'm trying I'm I'm con constantly 
um, practicing, allowing it to be just as nourishing as, as my old ones. Mm. Um, and literally what it consists of is I make lemon water and Mm -hmm. I drink it Mm -hmm. and then I make coffee and I put all kinds of other things in it Mm -hmm. and that's it. (laughs) And, but, uh, but I'm, um, very interested in returning to my morning pages and Speaking yeah. of which, the lemon water, I do that too. I forgot to say that. So warm lemon water, the mm-hmm. first thing. And then what I've been adding to that recently mm-hmm. is I chop up, and I learned this from my dad because this he, he he's convinced that this has cured him from all his like high blood pressure and, and ailments of all sorts. Mm-hmm. Uh, I chop up ginger, mm-hmm. raw ginger and garlic and just like scoop that up and eat it. Yeah. You eat it? Mm-hmm. You don't put yeah, it in like, the lemon water. No, no, no. no. So no, no powder, no anything. Just like chop. Oh my god. Chop ginger, chop garlic. Put it in a spoon. Put it in your mouth and swallow it with the lemon water. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. I'm gonna start yeah. that. Yeah. I do put ginger in, and when I'm sick, I put the garlic with some cayenne pepper. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this is interesting. So the morning routine. Yeah. My below the line excuse. Yeah. For why I am not doing more that would serve my mind and my body right now is that um, I will get interrupted Mm. by my kids. Mm. So I am in victim mode about that. Mm. I'm on the drama triangle Mm. and um, it's happening to me Mm -hmm. and I am not willing Mm -hmm. to get creative Mm -hmm. and to stand for what I know is really important for me. Yeah. So uh, coach me through that, please. (laughs) How do you make it happen? (laughs) So, you know, it'd be easy for you to give me some advice, I'm guessing, Mm -hmm. but I know that you, you know, I know you to be an excellent coach. And Mm -hmm. one of the big distinctions between, you know, a, a true coach mm. and a person who wants to give advice is the coach mm. helps you find your own answers yeah, yeah? through inquiry yeah. and discovery and curiosity. Yeah. Yeah. So would you mind coaching me through that yeah, for a couple minutes? Sure. I really want to get there. So, so when you do your morning routine mm. and when you feel all the glory of it, what do you, what are you feeling? Mm. Inspired. Mm clear Mm. uh directed um i have this feeling like my my cup is full my energy reserves are full so Mm. i can i can kind of accommodate and respond to my family and everybody else's needs Mm. throughout the day without Mm going into drama about it because Mm. I have, I have taken care of myself. So Mm. things don't deplete me. Mm. So what Um, I hear you say is it's self-nourishing and it's time mm. where you're giving to yourself and you giving to yourself thereby gives to your family. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. Absolutely does. Yeah. Yeah. And so what I also heard is that then you, the, the reason that your excuse for not doing it is that the kids interrupt you. Yeah. So when I sit down to meditate, for instance, Mm -hmm. um, you know, a, I, I have not recreated a beautiful meditation space like Mm -hmm. I used to have. Mm -hmm. Um, so I make myself unhappy by telling myself it's not beautiful. Mm Um, and I feel nervous when I sit down Mm -hmm. to meditate Mm. Um, anticipating interruption and mm. I become a little hypervigilant, like mm. listening for any noise outside my door, which mm. might indicate that someone's coming to barge in and ask me a question or something. Mm. What do you, what do you get from that? Hmm. What are the goodies I get for being in drama about it? Mm-hmm. Or just, just some of those things that you said. So you're in anticipation waiting for the kids to mm. interrupt you you are 
looking at the space saying, oh, and there's some self-criticism and self-blame that I hear. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So how does that serve you? Because I, I do fundamentally believe that we don't do anything that is out of service for us. Mm-hmm. It's just mm-hmm. mismatched, right? So right. how does that serve you? Well, it buys me an extra hour of sleep in the morning. Mm-hmm. I'm a night person. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's if I go to bed early, I... I will wake back up again mm. for many hours. So I've found that my own rhythm works better if I go to bed a little later, like 11. Mm-hmm. And then I kind of naturally wake up at 6.30 or 7. Mm. Uh, unfortunately, that's like also shortly before my own kids wake up. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I beat them downstairs and I make mm-hmm. the lemon water before they get there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that extra hour of sleep, like I'm really trying to Um, I've, I'm, I'm really, um, aware that the amount of sleep I get is so critical for me. Mm -hmm. And it's also, I haven't been like a person who's a fan of sleep. You know, I'm, Mm -hmm. I'm much more a fan of like Mm -hmm. being awake. I even like the feeling of being like really strung out and super tired. Mm -hmm. Um, and sometimes I operate really, really well that way, but it's not sustainable. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing I get is I get the extra sleep. The other mm-hmm. thing I get is uh, I get to be of service to my kids mm-hmm. and to my husband. Mm-hmm. And now that we have a dog, we've had a dog for about a year, the routine has changed a lot because he leaves the house and takes the dog on a walk and he likes to do it a certain way. And he likes to have mm-hmm. the dog like running and like in, in things I, I don't want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, so because he's gone, I stay home with the kids and mm-hmm. I'm not out in my meditation shed because mm-hmm. they get scared if I'm not in the house. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I like that there's a way that I can help make the morning easier for him and give the kids some love before they start mm-hmm. school and get them all ready. Mm-hmm. So as I hear you, what's interesting to me is when, when I asked you, well, how do you feel when you do do this? And what I heard was a lot around it's my self-care and I'm giving I'm giving mm-hmm. to myself so that I can give to others. And there was this balance between, you know, mm-hmm. for myself makes me a better mom and wife. And what I hear you saying that you're replacing that with, it's interesting because what I'm hearing you say is I'm giving myself sleep. I'm giving myself the permission mm-hmm. to sleep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm curious if that's a form of self-care. So that uh, needs yeah. self-care. And I'm giving myself to my children. Mm-hmm. I feel like what I'm doing is I'm kind of, you know, back to the conversation about flowing with chaos is I'm yeah. I'm being with just what is right now. Yeah. Like yeah. I am, I have two little kids. I have a child who's scared to be alone. I have mm-hmm. a dog. I have a husband mm-hmm. and um, we have school. So yeah. I'm, I'm, instead of kind of trying to fight it and we're remembering now when I had the, the really long morning routine, like the mm-hmm. yeah hour and a half, two hour, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I would feel all those great feelings. But then I started feeling a little nervous sometimes before I'd go back into the house of scared of what I was going to walk into mm-hmm, mm-hmm. of like how <laughs> panicked everyone would mm-hmm. be and stressed. So I do like that. There's just like an ease to mm-hmm, it. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I think a lot of it is there's identity issues I have around it. And I'm just like, okay, just you're a mom, just mm-hmm. you're a momming right now. Yes. I dropped my kids off in my pajamas this morning, mm-hmm. like roll with it. It's cool. And, um, so there is a lot of self care in it. And I think mm-hmm. it's like, but what I don't like about it is mm-hmm. that victimhood feeling of, um, I'm so scared of being interrupted that I'm not even willing to do this thing I love so much. And I'm curious, I wonder though, is that a story that is just like hanging out here, right? Because what I'm hearing again is Mm -hmm. you are giving yourself self-care. It's the self-care that you might be needing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And can you accept yourself for the chaos that you're in and Mm -hmm. giving yourself, could it, could it be possible that you're giving yourself exactly what you need? Oh my gosh. I totally see how I'm being a four. (laughs) Like I'm 
something is I'm making something be missing. missing. I'm I'm calling it missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because yeah, so what I, I'm not hearing you say like, oh, this morning routine gives me so much that is missing from my life today. Mm. Like I'm not True. hearing that. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. And unless I, the pain outweighs the the gain, the gain. Mm-hmm. True. So it is respecting my body and my mind and my family. Mm-hmm. Totally. Sounds like it. Ah. Oh, um. So. Thank you so much. Well, and I'll say one more thing, right? So I'll, I'll ask, there's a willingness question. Mm-hmm. So given all of that, given that you are, it sounds like you are doing what is in service of you and your family. And given that there's this want to incorporate some of what you used to have back, mm-hmm. even if it's not a, you know, like true gain want, mm-hmm. what would you be willing to do because right now it sounds like you're unwilling to see Mm -hmm. your meditation area it's you're unwilling Mm -hmm. to prioritize your morning routine over your kids and so Mm -hmm. is there anything if you like really tune in to your want and your energy Mm -hmm. is there anything that you would be willing to do yes uh what came up is i'd be willing to write down one word Mm. so that's a substitution for 25 minutes of journaling mm-hmm. um, that feels like interesting. And like I'd really learn a lot and discover a lot mm-hmm. by having that constraint. Mm-hmm. And then I could put them on little post-its and stick them up in the kitchen. Cause that's where I'll be probably when the word comes mm-hmm. to me. Mm-hmm. And it's just an opportunity to tune into like what wants to come through me that day. Yeah. Yeah. And in doing that, would you feel that self care and that, self-nourishment so that you can then go and provide to others as well? I don't know, TBD. What I do feel, in a certain sense, yes, because I I do feel my creative energy come up Mm -hmm. there Mm -hmm. and it's more like it's play. Mm -hmm. And I actually like that it is public inside of our family and Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's me like having a ritual that is creative that the kids can see and we can talk about and Mm -hmm. maybe they won't care. Maybe they'll tear them off the wall, Mm -hmm. but um, (laughs) then I'll get tax. (laughs) I'll get them tax. (laughs) Yeah. I love it. I'll play with that. I'll report back to you. That would be great. I'll report back to all of you. So um, Anjani, thank you so much for that beautiful coaching. Mm. This is what I love about what we just covered there is it underscores how interdependent we are in our families and how teamwork is really this integration of the we and the I Mm -hmm. and the it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the we being all those relationships in my family and how we operate as a family whole Mm -hmm. and, you know, what it would take for me to create, um, space and boundaries Mm -hmm. as a way to be of service. Like, Mm -hmm. so that would be like a, how does our family operate around boundaries? Mm -hmm. And then the I being me doing that, me having that time and space and all the inner work that I am Mm -hmm. trying to do here with Anjani's coaching to um, get myself to that place where I am showing up whole. Mm -hmm. And the it of course is just the morning routine. Mm -hmm. So morning, you know, there's so much stuff about morning routines and uh, Mm -hmm. we've covered, we've covered it like episode 30, 43 was all about morning routines. Episode uh, 44 was Alex Icon who created the five minute journal and I'm really into it. But I think sometimes in this, in this busy um, commercial world, we get so tactical and it's about buying a bunch of products. Totally. And so, but so much of, um, showing up as a whole person so that you can really be a team player is the inner work. Like the morning routine is, could you create the space for yourself Mm -hmm. and are you willing to let it evolve? And willing, like that's the operative word. I love that word so much. Mm -hmm. Like everything can be boiled down to that, right? Mm -hmm. What are you willing and unwilling to do? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If there was no right or wrong, but just what are you willing and unwilling to do? 
if you were allowed to do anything you wanted mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Totally. Beautiful. One, one other routine that um, our family has that might mm -hmm. be in service. And I don't know if you and your husband have this. I'm sure you have some version of it is every Sunday morning as a team before the kids wake up. Um, we do an hour, like half, half an hour to an hour. It's usually around an hour of conscious listening. Hmm. Yeah. And it's, we learned this that work? at a CLG couples retreat mm -hmm. and it's, it's like you're in forum <laughs> and the most important person is just listening to you. And for my husband who always wants to solve things, it's really taught him how to listen. Mm -hmm. And so we check in, you know, uh, with, with, uh, body sensation, mm -hmm. feeling state and next thought. Mm -hmm. And then we just do a round of, if you really knew me, you would know that. Mm. And we just listen. And sometimes we, you know, like the person says something, it's like, oh, of course, that's what's on their mind. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's like, whoa, I didn't mm. even know that was swimming around. And, you know, you do increments and then the other person says, what I heard you say is. Mm -hmm. So then, you know, there's that exchange. Mm. But it's really, it's lovely. It sounds kooky to say, but it's lovely. And sounds we've been great. doing it now for like 18 months every Sunday. Wow. And it's, it's lovely to be heard. It's lovely mm -hmm. to have space held mm -hmm. by your partner. And yeah, it's brought us, it's brought us closer. And then our kids see us doing it, right? So they mm -hmm. like, they'll wake up at yeah. some point in between. And so I think that's important too. It's all those things that little ones observe yes right? yes so beautiful yeah well um i we're, we're nearing the close uh so i would love um if you could share with our listeners how they can get in touch with you follow you learn more about your work i mean i am so i a gazillion questions i could continue to ask you about this topic of uh, family as <laughs> team and how you create it i mean the architecture of that is so beautiful the commitments but no rules wow Poof, yeah. mind blown i want to know what's in those books of yours that you shared oh so, my gosh I'm yes very curious. well you know this is one of our fate i'll just real quickly show you so this is one of our favorite ones because this was you know while we were planning our wedding, this mm. was my, my journal for when we would have conversations together. Mm. And, um, sometimes, you know, we have a, a pat a kind of sometimes frustrating pattern sometimes of debating and rehashing the same things again and again and again, mm -hmm. trying to make all these decisions about our life, yeah. where are we going to live and who yeah, are we yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. And things can become existential quite quickly, which is yeah. super annoying. So, um, now that we capture it, in a you know some sort of like a graphic form or a mind map or a chart mm -hmm, or a table mm -hmm. i i bring this stack of notebooks mm -hmm. when we're going to have one of these big conversations and i'm wow. like look at how many years we've had that conversation for and we land in the same place every time that's awesome and and it, it is awesome because it's a, it's a reaffirmation that you know we feel lost about the it sometimes yeah, yeah. but we still want to be the same thing we still yeah want the same things and you know we have um we have a north star it's like six mm. six words uh beauty adventure community health impact and abundance mm. and so that's on my my blackboard in my mm. office mm. and when we get lost we look to that as a test of are we living in line with those, mm. I guess you could call them values or commitments. Yeah. And it sounds very similar to the commitments. I guess they are commitments. Yeah. And so in this house hunt process that we're in, it's so fascinating, you know, cause our, our little dark sides show up in the form of trying to make things really, really complicated yeah. and hard yeah. and time consuming. Mm. And I am so like, because it, it always is, um, shrouded in, it looks like an opportunity, right? Mm. It's like we could remodel this house like crazy and that might take two years, but we double the value or whatever our story is. Um, and there's like a pattern that we have sometimes of honoring optimization yeah. over lifestyle. Mm. 
Mm. And um, just over like presence, mm. really, and sanity, health. So this beautiful dream house presented itself to us mm -hmm. not once but twice as our initial offer was rejected. And it's we're grappling with, is this too good for us? Oh, like, boy. is this too beautiful, too oh, abundant? And so I just keep going back to that list. And I'm like, if I really surrender yeah. to these highest commitments that we share, mm -hmm. if I'm really committed, then it's not about me. Yeah. And it's about what a trust fall it is and how brave, how courageous it would be for us to treat ourselves so well. Mm, I love that. So love that. what a great way to get out of upper limiting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so great. That's what nice. I'm curious, what um, Enneagram type is Roy? He's a three. He's a three. He's a three with, I, I think he's bi-winged. I think he has a two. Mm -hmm. So he's a three. So he's an achiever type. Mm -hmm. And we talked all about Enneagram and achiever types. Mm -hmm. I had Aaron Rookie on the mm -hmm. show um, sure. a few episodes ago. So he's he wants to do, 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 go, go, go. And he's, yeah. he's a very high achiever. He's achieved a lot in his life. He's a very yeah. like, go, go, go. And check things off the list. And mm -hmm. um and sometimes I, you know, I was telling him last night, like, it feels like I'm, I'm running a marathon sometimes and I'm at the 26 mile and I find out it's actually an ultra marathon and there's 26 <laughs> more miles ahead of me still. And I'm like, I just, cause it feels like it just like, um, you know, cause I'm just not, I'm not that. Um, yeah. so, but you know, he does, he creates an awesome life for us His willingness to work and mm. logisticize is, is mm. epic, mm. uh, his craftiness and cleverness and it's, mm his, his productivity is it's amazing. So I, mm -hmm. I like that I can rest into not being the one to do that. Um, and you know, we both are working with our shadows, like we, especially yeah. with his four wing of being, you know, like me and sometimes there's <clears throat> missing and things are dark mm -hmm. that always comes up. And so we're getting better and better at recognizing when is it our, you know, our ego? When is it, mm -hmm. when is it our higher self? When is it, what just wants to come through us. And so just trusting when things come easily, that's mm. the right path. Not yeah. like when things just show up and it's like, oh my gosh, look at this. First thing yeah. else we looked at. Yeah. Beautiful dream house. Yeah. Okay. We'll keep doing our work and looking, 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 looking like crap, yeah. you know? Yeah. No, just allow it. So that's great that you guys do. can do this work together. Mm -hmm. So great. Mm. I love that. Amazing. All right, Anjani, we are we are done with this episode for today. It's so great to have you back on the show. So um, great to be here. This I'm is excited fun. for our guests <laughs> to get to know you more. So we're going to link to Anjani's work in mm -hmm. our show notes. We'll link to Evolution, which mm -hmm. is a collective that she and I are associated with, evolution.team. We will also link to your brand new shiny website Yay. and your LinkedIn profile. Yeah. Um, so please do get in touch with Anjani. And I would love for you to join and get to be part of these conversations and really applying the learnings of all of this work we cover here, conscious leadership, shadow, uh, Enneagram, a, a huge realm of really cutting edge personal development stuff and applying it to your life in a way that recognizes and challenges you to be the CEO of your own life and to really lead and create the thing that you are here to create with ease. All right, we'll talk to you guys next time. Thanks for showing up for yourself, making time and I'll see you next week.